John the Baptist ends up losing his head as a result of this same man. And then you have the one who has the power over life and death, he comes. And wherever he goes, he's raising the dead, healing the sick, giving sight to the blind, performing all kinds of miracles. And you have his disciples following him. You have one of them who betrays him. And there's so much that unfolds in the story of Christianity in the early days. Jesus dies. And because he dies, everyone disowns him, everyone leaves. And then he raises from the dead, as he said he would. But their faith was shattered, their faith was broken. In the midst of them, you had men who were making boasts, saying that they would follow the Lord and that, you know, they were willing to die for him. And then you have in the, as the church is born, the Holy Spirit comes, tongues of fire begin to rest on them, they begin to speak in different languages, they, they begin to see all different gifts being exercised and used amongst them. And they're clothed with the promised power from on high. That's what the Holy Spirit is for you and me tonight. It's the promised power from on high that's for every believer. And you see, the man who denies him was also the one who, the one who disowns him is also the one who walks on water. But he's also the one that after he receives the baptism of the Holy Spirit, he stands, he preaches, and people get saved by the hundreds. A short while afterward, as the church begins to grow, one of the greatest men, in my opinion, from the book of Acts, Stephen, he's stoned to death. Judas the betrayer needs to be replaced. The disciples get together. They choose a man. They choose Matthias. He's never mentioned no more after he's chosen. God had a man whom he wanted to replace Judas. He wasn't ready yet. That ended up being the apostle Paul. He was the apostle that God wanted to replace him. And Christianity has always been under attack. And I want to tell you where I'm going with this tonight. In the beginning, you can remember when you were first saved, how everything was all about Jesus. Amen. Everything you needed in life, when you had no money, when times were difficult, when doctors gave you impossible news, you run to Jesus. And everything you did, everything you woke up for of a morning was all about the Lord. Distance didn't matter to you, where you travelled, coming to a convention or going to a mission, whatever trailer or south you had, it didn't matter as long as you got there. And everything was about the joy of the Lord in your life. Along the way, People will always try to add something more, something different. You had the Pharisees in the day of Jesus, they would give too many burdens for the people to carry. The Apostle Paul, when he was writing to the churches, there were people that slipped in who was putting in different heresies into the churches. And in particular in the book of Galatians, you find Paul addressing a matter where they were trying to add to the faith. You had certain Jews, who had become Christian, but they wanted to add more. They wanted to take away from the pure faith relying on Jesus for our salvation. And what they started to do was they started to add other things and they obviously it confused the people. And it troubled the Apostle Paul so much. I want to pick out a few verses from the book of Galatians chapter 5. Verse 1 he says, Christ has liberated us to be free. Stand firm then and don't submit again to a yoke of slavery. In verse 5 he says, Through the Spirit by faith we eagerly wait for the hope of the righteousness. Verse 7 particularly he says, You were running well. Who prevented you from obeying the truth? This persuasion does not come from the one who called you. Verse 9, A little yeast 
leavens the whole lump of dough, confusing you, sorry, through the whole batch of dough. I have confidence in the Lord, you will not accept any other view. And then he goes on to list the acts of the flesh. He says, I say, in verse 16, I say then walk by the Spirit and you will not carry out the desire of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is against the Spirit, and the Spirit desires against what is against the flesh. These are opposed to each other, so that you don't do what you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are obvious, immorality, moral impurity, promiscuity, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, strife, jealousy, Outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and anything similar. I tell you about these in advance, as I told you before. He's writing this to Christians. I want you to understand tonight, this writing is to the believer. And listen what he says at the end of this. He says, I tell you about these things in advance, as I told you before, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. You see, in the early days, we hit the ground running and it was all about Jesus. And here, Paul is addressing a particular group of people in verse 7, when he says, who cut in on you? You were running so well. And tonight, I'm not necessarily saying that someone it's a person, but I want you to ask the question tonight. Some of you were running so well. Some of you in this tent had so much promise for the kingdom of God. And you've allowed something to cut in on you. You've allowed something else to take your focus from the thing that you once dedicated your life to. When it was all about Jesus, when all of your hope, when all of your trust was on Jesus, when you went and you went on your knees in prayer in the prayer closet and you prayed, you prayed and you believed that God would do what you asked him because you'd seen it again and again and again. Someone asked me a little while ago, Billy, why don't we see the miracles we used to? What's happened? And I believe this tonight. I don't believe God has changed one bit. He's an unchanging God. The reason we don't see what we once saw was because we've changed. It's because we no longer have Christ as the King of Christianity. We no longer have Him sitting on the throne of our hearts as He once did. We were running well. But we've allowed something else to creep in. And you know if that's you tonight. You know if you're not the man or woman that you once was. He says a little yeast works through the whole batch. In order to make bread, you put yeast in it, it makes it rise. And you only need a small amount to make it rise, bread. And you only need a little bit of sin in your life. You only need to make a small allowance. You only need to take your focus off the cross just a little. And I'll tell you what will happen. You have an enemy who knows you well. He knows the taste of the sin you love. And he will rummage through the garbage. He'll go through the rubbish. And he'll find all of the things that you used to love. The things that you used to, that you give to Jesus. And he'll start to introduce them back into your life. And you'll find yourself drifting away from God. See, Paul urges, he says, listen, I say to you, walk by the Spirit. Me and you can't make it without the Holy Spirit tonight. We have to keep in step with the Spirit of God. Not the rules and the traditions of man, but the Word of the Lord. The Word of Jesus. Jesus said from his own mouth, when he was being tempted by the devil, man, he doesn't live on bread alone, but on every word 
that comes from the mouth of God. 